YMT Mountain News at 6. The war in Ukraine is still raging and the country's president is pleading for help from other countries, including the United States. Today, President Biden called Vladimir Putin a war criminal. Russian forces have reportedly bombed several buildings full of children in Ukraine. President Zelensky is asking for anti-aircraft systems, drones, radar stations, radios, and other secure communications. In Montgomery County, a couple who came to the U.S. as refugees are now watching it all unfold from thousands of miles away after building their lives in Kentucky. As Shelby Lofton tells us, now they want to get, give back to the country they cannot go back to. I was a refugee, a religious refugee. Uh, my family was prosecuted in Ukraine because of a communist regime. Nick Pirorodetsky and Natalia Pirorodetska met in Pittsburgh and built their lives in the bluegrass. Their memories of leaving Ukraine are clear. Leave everything behind and disattach yourself and move to the different, different world. The streets I grew up on with people just running towards the bunkers, it's just brought a lot of memories and triggered certain things. It's almost like PTSD. Nick and Natalia said they were moved watching President Zelensky address Congress. I was literally in tears how he um, heroically chose to defend the country of Ukraine. From thousands of miles away, the couple feels inspired to send help to their first home. If we don't send them help, they can't make it right now because the factory shut down, everything shut down. They Everybody's in a military mode. Through their church, the couple is raising money they'll send to Ukraine. A lot of people lost documents, and it's a lot more challenging to come here now. The proud immigrants said they want the war to end and peace for their people. I think I, I am American dream. I came over here with my suitcase, uh, didn't have no money, didn't have no, nothing, uh, just like refugees right now in Ukraine. In Montgomery County, Shelby Lofton, WKYT. The couple says all of the money they raise will pay for medicine and first aid kits for those on the front lines. Congressman Hal Rogers released a statement today after the Ukrainian president addressed the United States Congress. He said, quote, our hearts are heavier today after hearing President Zelensky's plea for help in his war-torn country. His video of the chilling, deadly destruction taking place in Ukraine served as a grave reminder of the unwarranted barbaric terror that Vladimir Putin has unleashed from Russia on his peaceful neighbors. Last week, Congress approved $13.6 billion in emergency funding to support Ukraine's military and humanitarian aid. Congressman Rogers went on to say that President Biden needs to do more to support Ukraine's air defense and to display America's power as a peace broker and defender of democracy. Well, we've seen sunshine return to the mountains this afternoon and evening, and we're going to slowly clear out as we head through tonight. But we still do have a little bit of a shower opportunity as we run through the remainder of our Wednesday. I-64 Moorhead, plenty of sunshine out there. We'll continue to watch the clouds push on through the region. Mountain Parkway at Slade getting a little bit overcast at the moment as we continue to push through. Highs today have not been too bad. You notice where we've not seeing the clouds, it's been warmer up into the northern part of the state, but for the rest of us, we're starting to get there into the middle 60s this afternoon, still dealing with temperatures in the 60s in many spots, though a few 50s already working in. You see those clouds continuing to push on to the north as that low pressure sits to our south. Let's recenter the view. You'll see what's going on. Area of thunderstorms heading toward Atlanta. That's in the middle of that low pressure moving across Alabama. That's going to move on to the north and east and slowly work the showers out of our area later tonight. Middle and upper 40s, so a mild night as showers come to an end. I'll have the latest on when more showers, though, could work in before the end of the work week coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? Evan, thank you very much. Well, you might call it Eastern Kentucky Night at the Boys Sweet 16 in Lexington. Three mountain teams are in action, two playing each other, and many fans have made the trip. WYMT's Jade Saylor is live at Rupp Arena with more. Jade? Perry Central tipped off just moments ago to get things started for our mountain teams in the Sweet 16. 
and to say their fans are excited is an understatement. It was the calm before the storm, but once Perry Central fans began to arrive, they brought the life to Rupp Arena, decked out in school spirit to cheer the Commodores to a victory over George Rogers Clark. Well, it's just the, it's just the fact of making a Sweet 16. You know, it's a mountain team. A lot of people don't never make it that plays for mountain teams, so it's just a, it's a big deal. Win or lose, fans say they're just proud of their team for being here. And we will have more Mountain fans in the building tonight when North Laurel tips off against Pikeville at 8.30. At Rupp Arena, Jade Saylor, WIMT, Mountain News. All right, Jade, thank you very much. And as she mentioned, we'll have much more from the fans of all the Mountain teams at Rupp tonight coming up at 11. A body was found inside of a burned building in Harlan County. Kentucky State Police say they received a call about a structure fire last night. They said the fire was on Bank Road in the Cold Iron community. Police reported that after the fire was put out, they found 48-year-old Herschel Dwayne Holland's body. Holland was the owner of the building. His body was taken to the state medical examiner's office for an autopsy. Police say no foul play is suspected. On Wednesday, Governor Andy Bashir delivered water and sewer improvement funding to four counties. Announced in Somerset, the grants are worth several million dollars and the projects are chosen by the local governments. Those projects are for Clay, Laurel, Pulaski and McCreary counties. The goal of these awards is to deliver clean drinking water and better sewage systems. As counties and, and, and cities and counties, as a region or as an entire state, we get a lot more done when we stop competing with and instead work with one another. The cleaner water program is part of the $1.3 billion Building a Better Kentucky plan. The governor hopes this plan will create jobs, expanding broadband, delivering clean drinking water, and building new schools. The governor has vetoed legislation that would immediately end the COVID-19 state of emergency. In a video message this morning, the governor criticized the measure, saying it would cut off $50 million in extended SNAP benefits. We asked Governor Bashir in Somerset about his decision to veto the bill. We don't have one single restriction left in Kentucky, and we haven't in six months. The only thing Senate Joint Resolution 150 will do is cut off $50 million of food aid to hungry Kentuckians. Now, Senate President Robert Stiver says he disputes the governor's argument, saying the state could still receive those extra benefits. In January, Governor Bashir signed Senate Bill 25, which ends the state of emergency on April 14th. A bill to legalize sports betting is one step closer to Governor Bashir's desk. The House Licensing Committee unanimously passed House Bill 606. Similar bills have gone through the legislature in the past but failed. But this year, it's passed the first hurdle, making it out of committee. Supporters believe it could bring in more than $22 million annually. Kentucky is landlocked by other states that allow online sports betting, so people just have to cross state lines. Supporters say people would also spend money on other things while they're here, like going to sports bars to watch the games. The owner of Hoopsters in Jeffersonville says with the Kentucky crowd and March Madness, they get a much needed boost. I just hope people get out and support their favorite venue, if it's Hoopsters or wherever. Get out and support the places because the last few years has been tough on sports bars, restaurants. Just get out and support your favorite venue and go IU, go Kentucky, go Notre Dame, go Purdue. That's our local teams. The bill puts a 14.25% tax on mobile wagers. It also establishes guidelines for online poker and daily fantasy sports. A well-loved diner in eastern Kentucky is moving locations after decades of service. WIMT's Dakota Maker shows us what will soon be the new home of Francis's Diner in Perry County. Serving up home-cooked meals for thousands of customers in its 32 years in the airport garden section of Perry County. I have great customers, and they, I know they're going to be here every day, most of them two, sometimes three times a day. Owner Frances Napier says she decided to move so she could be closer to home, and especially if she needed to walk to work. For us, it still feels like she's staying at home. Moving to downtown Hazard on East Main Street, 
These pictures giving a glimpse inside the new location. We won't be able to serve more. It's it's smaller, but we'll be able to see you as many as we have. Downtown coordinator Bailey Richards says discussions on moving the diner has been in the works for three years. It's been something that we've kind of known about and it's been in the back of our minds for a while, but it really started kind of moving forward in the last couple of months. Saying this kind of move adds to the appeal of downtown hazard. We don't have anything that does dinner. We don't have um, a ton of sit down options in our downtown area. So it's been something that we've really wanted to see. Um, and so we're really excited about it. 16 new businesses opened in Hazard last year. A sit down restaurant in downtown Hazard can bring more businesses in the county and encourage others to move downtown. We have a really kind of condensed workforce. It's all not far from downtown. Um, and then really the hospital is pretty close and things like that. Looking forward to another 30 years of serving locals in Perry County, Dakota Makris, WYMT Mountain News. And I can't tell you how many times I've eaten there over the years. Frances says she does not have any plans to retire right now. The diner plans to open at its new location April 1st. We have several road closings planned throughout our region in the next few days and weeks. The first one is in Martin County. Part of Kentucky 292 will be closed for repairs. Those repairs are set to begin on Friday at 8 a.m. The repairs are expected to last around three weeks. Kentucky transportation officials are letting drivers know to use an alternate route and use extra caution while near the construction zone. Also, a portion of Kentucky 2009, also known as Greasy Creek Road in Leslie County, will be closed. The closing is needed for slide repairs. Those repairs will begin near mile point 10 and is expected to happen between 7.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. tomorrow and Friday. Kentucky transportation officials are wanting drivers to know that they should expect delays there and to use extra caution while driving near that area. Tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day and many folks celebrate their Irish heritage by having a drink. WIMT's Jordan Mullins has more from the Pikeville Police Department where officers are warning about impaired driving. St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner and officers with the Pikeville Police Department are reminding folks to stay safe, drink responsibly and drive sober. It's one of the leading causes of, of, of death, uh, and it's avoidable. It's, it's something that's avoidable. Intoxicated uh, drivers have taken thousands of lives in Kentucky alone. I know a lot of families that have been impacted by DUI-related uh, collisions or uh, by going to jail for DUI, losing their jobs. And officers suggest planning your celebrations ahead or having a designated driver. Call a friend, stay where you're at, call a taxi, um, Call somebody, but don't get behind the wheel of a vehicle uh, and drive while you're under the influence of anything. And if you see someone who may be driving intoxicated, to call law enforcement to keep others safe. 911, call. Uh, don't try to stop them yourself. Just stay away from them. Uh, but call us. Uh, call 911. Call us, the sheriff's office, Kentucky State Police. It could be your family that hit head on down the road. And uh, let us know. A reminder not to test your luck and never drink and drive. In Pikeville, Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News. Officer Khan also said Pikeville PD's officers take impaired driving very seriously and it hits very close to home as many of them know someone who was affected by a DUI related collision. Keeping an eye on showers working through the region this evening. I've got when I've got the latest on when more could work in on the way next. And tomorrow is a big day for UK fans as the men's team begins what is hoped will be a long run in the NCAA tournament. We'll take you live to Indianapolis for a preview. WIMT News app offers alerts on breaking stories as they happen.